In this talk, we'll be discussing the status of selected circuit subprojects. First, we'll quickly summarize circuit for those of you who missed the keynote. Second, we will briefly discuss the key differences between hardware and software. We'll then review several subprojects and subsystems before ending with a call to join us on this journey. Existing hardware compilers and tools are mostly expensive, closed source commercial tools. They generally suffer from software engineering quality issues and don't work together terribly well. Given these issues, open source tools have been developed. However, new open source efforts are hindered by startup costs and since there are no good standards to write to, also suffer interoperability problems. Circuit aims to ease the creation of new innovative hardware tools by providing a modular MLIR based framework and the standard dialects for the compiler for compiler developers to target. In other words, hardware compiler developers get to use a standard set of Legos, the general MLIR approach. The circuit keynote at this meeting elaborates on these points. Hardware, as a simplification, builds everything from bit storage and logic operations connecting together said storage. There's no notion of control flow or order, so everything runs in parallel. Every single op runs concurrently, so it's basically a distributed system with hundreds of millions of nodes. Traditional software programming models are clearly not applicable. While these software models can sometimes be converted to hardware via heroic analyses and transforms, hardware designers require far more control and predictability and thus need specialized languages. If you are paying attention in the keynote, the standard languages leave much to be desired. We also don't have shared memory, which kind of makes sense considering hardware is what implements the shared memory abstraction which makes things really easy for all you software folks. We can create local memories which can be written to or read from only by the surrounding logic. This has distinct performance advantages, but it means we must explicitly push data around both on and off chip. Lastly, since there does not exist a large enough magnifying glass in the world, we cannot see what's happening in real time on the wires. So we must use simulation for debugging and verification. Now that you've been rapidly brought up to speed, let's discuss specifics. This is a million foot view of circuits dialects and subsystems. Since we don't need, since we don't have time to discuss them all, the ones highlighted in orange are the few we'll be discussing. The fertile dialect was created to replace the compiler for the Chisel hardware description language. HDLs are domain specific languages used to describe electronic circuits. Chisel is implemented as an embedded DSL in Scala. This means that you write a Scala program, and when you run it, you get a bunch of Verilog representing your design. Powering Chisel is a compiler framework and intermediate representation called Fertile. Chisel generates Fertile IR, and then the compiler framework handles the lowering process to Verilog, as well as optimizations and other diagnostic analyses. In Circuit, we are writing a drop-in replacement for the current implementation of the Scala-based Fertile compiler, currently used by Chisel. To do this, we wrote a fertile IR parser which can import the textual fertile IR and annotations into MLIR. We created a dedicated fertile dialect which captures the fertile semantics, and we created a lowering and optimization passes to the hardware, combinational, and system Verilog dialects. Next slide, please. So why are we replacing the fertile compiler with an MLIR-based one? The circuit keynote covers the advantages in great detail, but to reiterate a couple of the points, the absolute time it takes to compile designs can be enormous, and the speed improvements of the new compiler make a big difference. We can leverage the common compiler components that are being developed in Circuit. The Circuit project has much more advanced Verilog generation capabilities, giving us much more readable output. And finally, there are many cool things that we can do in the future to interoperate with other MLIR-based tools in the future. A small but enthusiastic group is working on supporting high-level synthesis, or HLS, within Circuit. HLS compiles programs in a high-level language into hardware descriptions. Historically, HLS starts from C-like languages, which are notoriously bad at capturing all the juicy semantics you need to generate good hard hardware. MLIR presents a huge opportunity to change this. With MLIR, HLS is no longer just about the C programming model. Any front end that can target MLIR's core IRs can be adapted to HLS. These IRs provide a language agnostic starting point for new HLS workflows, which we are building in Circuit. Next slide, please. The first path we have working is based on data flow and doesn't require scheduling. 
Circuit can lower a program from MLIR's control flow graph into the handshake IR, which represents a data flow graph. This can be simulated using LLVM's JIT compiler or lowered into hardware using Circuit's lower level IRs. While this approach is very flexible, it introduces extra overhead in the hardware. Next slide. To address this, we are also working on a new path that pre-computes a schedule. Circuit recently gained infrastructure to solve this kind of scheduling problem. After applying this analysis, a program can be lowered from MLIR's loop constructs into static circuits in the Calix IR. By starting from higher level abstractions in MLIR, we can analyze the program while it still has all those juicy semantics. This is why MLIR and Circuit really shine for HLS. Different workflows can easily use the levels of abstraction to make the most sense. Next slide. With the Elastic Silicon Interface project, hardware designs are broken up into modules. In order to get work done, said modules must communicate not only amongst themselves, but with software. This would be easy if we had pointers to global shared memory to pass around. But as previously mentioned, hardware lacks a shared memory model. So wires must be built to move bits. Additionally, runtime logic to build runtime like logic to move data on and off chip needs to be constructed for host communication. A, com uh, a, a complication in this is that some languages come with their own bespoke runtime. So conflicts sometimes occur, making it difficult in some cases to use the proper language. Both building on chip interconnect and the runtime are referred to as plumbing. They're conceptually simple and relatively mechanical, but really easy to screw up, usually leading to corrupted data rather than a compile error. So plumbing is a rather apt jargon. ESI is a robot plumber. It takes a type specification of the inputs and outputs for all the modules, as well as the desired communication graph. It then automatically builds an interconnect. Additionally, it will create a runtime bridge to software running on the host and expose a typed API customized to the modules which require host communication. Further, it is capable of building a runtime bridge between the host software and a simulation of the hardware exposing the same typed API. For more details, I delivered a short talk about ESI at Latte earlier this year. Now we come to the core which unifies circuit. The HW dialect contains common abstractions like modules, instances, and some data types, all of which go away during some point of the compilation since they're abstractions for humans. COM contains the base set of logical operations. Seek is for the bit storage, which can be tied together by COM operations. The beauty of circuit is that if a compiler developer lowers into these three dialects, they get all the existing and future backend features for free. Currently, that's only the comb operations and the premium export Verilog functionality. In the near to medium term, they'll also get fast simulations. In the longer term, we could go so far as to replace all of the expensive, commercial, low quality external tools which are required today. Who knows what the future holds, but the sky's the limit. An important aspect of hardware design is being able to simulate the circuits before we uh, bake them into silicon. So simulation in this case means taking the hardware description, applying some stimulus to the input, and checking whether the response it produces is correct. In reality, designs go through multiple levels of simulation. There are high-level functional tests of what the human designer has written, then simulation of the individual logic gates that the hardware synthesizer has produced, and crucially, also simulations that consider the signal timing extracted from the silicon layout. Commercial simulators for this are expensive and slow and can have pretty obscure performance clips. So having a good answer to simulation will be an excellent buy-in point for Circuit. Like using Circuit immediately gives you high quality, fast and open source simulation capabilities. Pretty much like using LVM immediately gives you solid JIT and CoCheck. And next slide, please. So timing-aware simulations are critical for the hardware design stack. Traditional languages like System Verilog and VHDL do this with an event queue programming model. Now, most of the circuit core dialects are not timing-aware, but MLIR is brilliant for exactly this situation. We can just add a separate dialect to deal with the event queue, which is what the traditional languages would lower to, and what the simulator can easily simulate. And then for simulation, we either just lower the entire design to this dialect, or we mix and match dialects and keep higher level operations where they speed things up. Also, simulators usually benefit from completely restructuring a design into state transfer functions, for example. And we can just have another dialect to do such simulation-specific optimizations. Next slide, please. 
So that's Circuit and the, and the status of several of its subprojects. We'd like you to join us in this exciting journey.